Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach who has lost and maintained a 140 pound weight loss and it is Friday. So it's weigh-in day, we're entering the tail end of my cut. We're gonna talk a little bit about that. We'll talk about my week, the Weight Watchers Workshop topic, and I'm going to tell you something exciting that happened this last weekend. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not, turn your bell on because I do a weigh-in every single Friday and I actually upload five videos every single week. Down in the description box, I will link nutrition coaching. Highly, highly recommend those personalized macros and calories. That is what I follow to lose and maintain my 140 pound weight loss, as well as one-on-one -on -one coaching for questions, accountability, or to talk with me directly. Links, discounts to my favorite things, and come join our Facebook group, it's free, it's a great supportive community, and we would love to have you. So let's talk about the exciting thing that happened this last weekend, my week, my weigh-in, and the Weight Watchers workshop topic. Happy Friday, friends. I hope you had an amazing, amazing week. Welcome to June. We are officially in the first week of June. It's hot here. It is It is hot here. It is in the hundreds every single day. We have an excessive heat watch for this entire week. It's, it's, it's been hot. It's been almost 70 degrees at 5 a.m. when I'm at boot camp. And that's warm for working out because I'm already sweaty in the winter at boot camp. So you can imagine how sweaty I get working out when it's already 70 degrees out. But I will say that it's nice. We do have a nice breeze in the morning, so it makes up for it a little bit, but it's definitely hot here. And I know that there's a bit of a heat wave kind of across the U.S. So for those of you in a heat wave, I sympathize. I empathize with you a hundred percent. Speaking of heat wave and a hundred degrees, I ran a 5k this last Saturday. So a week ago, tomorrow. It is the Meet Me Downtown Tucson 5K. Now this particular 5K starts at 7 p.m. And if you know me, if you follow me, you know that I go to bed at 7 p.m. I'm typically asleep by 7.30 or 8. I'm up every morning between 3.30 and 4 a.m. So I go to bed early and I get up early. So the thought of running a 5K, doing a 5K at 7 p.m. was pretty daunting for me. But I signed up to do it with my friend Mel, who I know from boot camp. She's actually who I do a lot of my runs and 5Ks with. I just, I love her. And I've become friends with her running community. I actually talked about this when we did the Shamrock 5K back in March. And I've become friends with some of her friends from the running community. So I got to see all of them at the race. My friend Mary Chris was there. She's the one that I hiked Picachu Peak with back in January. You know, the mountain where I pulled myself up with cables. She was my ride or die during that hike. So I got to see her at the run, but it was definitely a late start for me. Uh, full transparency, I took a nap. I told Troy, make me take a nap because there's no way I'm gonna make it if I don't. So I did take about an hour nap. I made it through the run, but let me tell you, at 6.45 p.m., it was 100 degrees. 100 degrees. At the start of the race, it was 98. And when we finished the race, it was a balmy 96. So it was definitely warm. I will say that once the sun started to go down about 20 minutes or so into the race, it definitely helped with the heat and the warmth. But holy moly, it was a hot one, but I did it. I completed the race. I had a really good time for the race. We had hot dogs at a local food truck after. It was really, really fun. It was a late night for me. We kept saying that we were out with the night people because me and Mel and our friend Randall, I'll pop a picture in here of him. I also popped a few pictures of the race for you. We were saying we are not night people. We do not hang out with the night people. We're asleep when the night people are coming out. So it was kind of weird to be out after dark, which is absolutely ridiculous. But honestly, the three of us said we're never out after dark. So it was really, really fun. I had an amazing time. Checked it off my bucket list. I would definitely do that race again next year for us in Arizona, we typically take the summer off of 5K. So this was the last 5K that I'm doing until September. So there's really nothing in July or August. It's it's just too hot here. I mean, that was hot and that was the final hot run of the summer. So I plan on doing some hikes this summer. I plan on also doing some more of my run of my walks up to Mamak Hill in Tucson. So I'm going to get in some fun exercise, some walks, some hikes, just without the 5Ks through the summer months. The downfall of that race is when I went to I was parked in a parking garage and it was so packed. I sat in line in the parking garage for 40 minutes. So I actually didn't get home until about 10.30. I didn't get to sleep until 11. And guess who was up at 4 a.m.? 
me. My body is just programmed to get up at 4 a.m. Troy's like, we'll just sleep in till five or six. And I said, that's a nice thought. We'll see what happens. And I was up at 4 a.m. But it was great. It was a fun run. Glad it's the last 5K of the season. I'm ready for a little bit cooler temps come September, but check that off my bucket list. Proud of myself for finishing it. I'm also finishing up week six of my eight week cut, only two more weeks. I actually was just talking with Kayleen, my coach on Trainwell, formerly Co-Pilot Fitness, about my cut and I told her, I'm kind of over it, to be honest. I'm kind of over it. And she said, oh, well, we don't have to continue, but I really want to continue the next two weeks. It's only two more weeks. If I've done it for six weeks, I can do it for two more. I'm just I'm tired of it, to be honest. I'm ready to go back to maintenance, getting a little bit more calories every single day. I find that I am pretty typically hungry on this cut, which makes sense because I'm in a caloric deficit. I am seeing results from the cut, and that's partly why I said, let me just finish out the next two weeks because I am seeing some results. Not necessarily weight related on the scale because we don't care about that, but I'm seeing changes in my body, in my endurance, in my strength, which is really what my goal was for this cut. So we'll see what the next couple of weeks bring, but I'm not gonna lie when I say that I'm um, that I'm glad it's almost over. Other than that, I had a really good week, got in my water, stayed in my calorie deficit for my cut. I'm feeling really good about starting June off strong. But before I share my weigh-in for the week, let's talk about this week's Weight Watchers workshop topic, and that is how to build a satisfying meal. I need this topic because like I said, in this cut, I'm definitely, definitely more hungry. So the more satisfying a meal is for me, the better. And this rings true for anybody on a weight loss journey. When we're in a calorie deficit, we're not giving our body the calories that our body actually needs. That would be maintenance. So we're gonna be hungry. So building satisfying meals is really important. Try this, decide how many total points or calories you want to spend on the meal, then choose a food or foods from each of the categories below. So step one, filling foods. Pick one or more protein and or fiber rich items as the base of your meal. Protein sources are things like chicken, eggs, tofu, seafood, beef, beans, lentils, and yogurt. Some great fiber filled foods are non starchy veggies, oatmeal, whole wheat pasta, and brown rice. Step two, bulk it up. Choose foods loaded in fiber to fill your plate for few or no points. Things like non-starchy veggies or fruit like broccoli, mushrooms, or berries. Step three, add in some flavor. Use the items in smaller quantities. The only requirement is that they taste good to you. These are things like cheese, heart healthy oils, salad dressing, avocado, nuts, and olives. And last but not least, step four, have a wild card. Add whatever else you're in the mood for or what helps you finish the dish. Things like potatoes, corn, bread or grains, a base for soup, or a sauce. So this is how it might come together for you. Filling foods typically have zero calories, zero points or extremely low calorie. These filling foods like chicken breast with taco seasoning or fat-free refried beans. And then the foods that you're using to bulk up your meals typically have zero points and low calorie as well. These are things like cooked peppers and onions, shredded lettuce or tomatoes. The things that add flavor are going to have more points, more fat, more calories. Again, shredded cheese, avocado, oil for cooking. And lastly, your wild card is kind of gonna fall in the middle points wise and calorie wise. And this is things like corn tortilla shells. So this this particular meal example is a total of six points and right around 250 calories. So putting things together in a way that keeps you full and satisfied is really important. You know I preach about protein and fiber. Every single meal should have protein and fiber so and a fiber source, not only for overall health, but again to keep you full and satisfied between meals and snacks. There's no one right way to put together a meal or snack, but I promise you if it's based around protein and fiber, it's just going to be more filling overall. The biggest key to weight loss and the only way to lose weight is to be in a caloric deficit. And we don't wanna be miserable in a caloric deficit. Like I said, myself included, we're going to be hungry, but if we can have these fiber filled, protein packed, more filling, satisfying foods, that's going to make weight loss in a caloric deficit a little bit easier, a little less miserable. And that's important for maintaining our weight loss and continuing on our weight loss journey because whatever we do to lose weight we have to do that to maintain our weight loss I cannot recommend protein packed fiber fill foods with every single meal this is really what I did to lose 90 pounds in 2022 
calories, protein, fiber. So building your meals and snacks around that is going to build an overall more satisfying meal. Let us know down below what are your tips and tricks for adding in protein and fiber to your meals. Now let's jump in to my weigh-in for the week, ending out week six of my cut. I stayed in my calorie deficit. I actually ate out several times this last week and was still able to stay in a deficit. You can still eat out and reach your weight loss goals. I also am just a couple days out from starting my cycle, so I'm even more hungry. The last couple days I've been even more hungry. I've been extremely sore this week between the 5K weightlifting I started started a new workout routine, train well in my coach Kayleen. So that made me a little bit sore. Boot camp's been pretty intense this last week. So when I stepped on the scale today, everything included, I actually am exactly the same weight as I was last week. So I maintained my weight this week. To the ounce, I lost a pound over the last couple of weeks, so I am thrilled with the maintenance, especially because I ate out a little bit more. I'm sore, I'm about to start my cycle. Literally everything is working against me and I was still able to maintain my weight loss. So I'm feeling really, really good about that. I will go ahead and pop up here on the screen how much weight I've lost total and my current weight. So I'm really happy with where I am. I'm excited to see what the next two weeks of my cut bring. I'm excited for the cut to be over and I'm going to really focus on getting in my water, eating those filling satisfying meals to maximize my calories, my points. I'm just excited to see what the next couple of weeks bring. I will of course have Trainwell, formerly Copilot Fitness linked down below for you. I do still have a 14 day free trial. Talk to a coach, get a workout, try it out for 14 days. If you love it, continue. If you hate it, no obligation to continue after the 14 days. You literally have nothing to lose. And thank you to everybody who's reached out to me saying that you love Trainwell as much as I do. It has changed the game for me. I am about three and a half months into it and it was the best decision I made for workouts. Absolutely love it. Love my coat. Definitely take advantage of the 14 free days. I'll link it at the top of the description box. And I wanna hear from you in the comments. How was your week? How was your weigh-in? What are your favorite protein fiber fill foods? Let me know everything down below. And if you enjoyed another weigh-in video, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe, turn your bell on because I do a weigh-in every Friday and I actually upload five videos every single week. I have a very exciting announcement coming your way on Sunday, so make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss Sunday's video. Down in the description box is nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things and my Facebook group. Thank you for watching, friends. Happy Friday, happy weekend. I'll see you in tomorrow's grocery haul and Sunday's exciting video. Bye!